Hey guys, I am Zach, and this is not an accurate representation of my August wrap-up. So, I did read these three books, but I also read five ebooks slash audiobooks, so I read eight books total, which isn't bad, except for the fact that my overly ambitious August uh, TBR was 19 books long. Yeah, no, that didn't, that, that, that didn't happen for a number of reasons. One was because this evil book um, was fantastic, but I didn't want the series to end. There was another book here in here that the pacing was kind of slow, so it took me like a week to read, even though it was a fantastic book. And probably the worst thing of all, which isn't really that bad, but in terms of getting reading done, it was terrible. And that was this past week, I had to babysit my twin nephews for an entire week. And I didn't get a lot of reading done because of that. So three weeks out of August, I was reading two books. And then, actually no, I was, re I was reading this during that last week, but... Yeah, I just barely got it done. Anyway, let's get on to the actual wrap-up. The first book I read, or should I say finished, was The Dire King by William Ritter. This is the fourth book in the Jacoby series, which is a fantastic series. I mean, every single book, well, I want to say keeps getting better, but I think there's a part of me that still loves Ghostly Echoes a bit more than The Dire King. But... This book is fantastic. There were there were moments that gave me very visceral, just heart-tugging reactions, but that's a good thing. I should be having very just intense reactions to the stuff that happens in this book. If you don't know what the Jacoby series is about, it's about a detective named R.F. Jacoby and the main, main character is Abigail Rook, who finds herself as his assistant. And Jacoby is a bit of a private eye, but he deals more in the otherworldly and paranormal. I give this book five stars. No doubt. It's fantastic. Then I picked up Stolen Songbird by L.B. Shulman. This is about a girl named Livy, whose mother moves them across the country. And she soon finds out that her mother's new job isn't in a bakery like she thought. It's actually watching Adele, her maternal grandmother, who th she thought was long dead, but actually suffers from Alzheimer's. While getting to know Adele, um, Livy starts to notice things like Adele not knowing her own name or saying things that sound like they may have come out of a concentration camp. And... Then she finds some journal entries with her new friend Franklin that seem to point to a, an interesting connection with Anne Frank. I was very, like, anxious getting into this book. I didn't know how this author was going to portray all, you know, the, the Holocaust aspects. And I didn't know if she was going to portray them with the respect that they deserve. I mean, I assumed she would, but... At the same time, you know, I, I kind of believe the best in a lot of people, so, and that doesn't always work out. But I think the, you know, the historical fiction aspects of this book were handled very well. Do I think everybody's going to agree that they were handled really well? No, there are people out there that are far more sensitive to this type of a thing, and that is understandable. But for me, I don't think she, you know mishandled this at all. My biggest problem with this book was that there were too many subplots, like, I just, there were things that were brought up only to, you know, be kind of dropped and then brought up again towards the end, and I had completely forgotten about them. That was, 
it was just, it didn't make sense. It was very choppy and uneven. And honestly, I didn't care about the romance. Don't get me wrong, I respected what the author was trying to do with the romance in this book. You know, this isn't your typical male love interest, you know, dark, brooding, whatever. This is more of a quirky and adorkable type of love interest. But I just, it, it didn't work for me. Um, and I don't think it was because of what the author was trying to do, but I just don't think she handled it in the best way because I couldn't really see any chemistry between Libby and Franklin. But yeah, I give this book four stars. <sighs> then I read a book that was not on my August TBR, but it wasn't because I just randomly decided to read it, it just, I forgot to put it on my August TBR. And that is The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding by Alexandra Bracken. This is the first book in a new middle grade series by Alexandra Bracken about a boy named Prosper Redding. His great great something or other grandfather made a deal with a demon in this book called a fiend. And for, he wished for uh, riches and success in exchange for his and his entire family's servitude essentially. And then he double crosses the demon, the demon gets angry, and promises to return in the form of one of his descendants, or possessing one of his descendants, and that descendant is Prosper Redding. I loved this book. It's spooky, but like in, in a way that's like okay for kids. It's got a very Halloween vibe, so if you're going to read it, I highly recommend reading it in October. It's the perfect Halloween book. And this book made me cry. There's a part in the second chapter where you really understand how lonely and isolated Prosper is, and you just want to give him a hug. And I was just like, I, I was shedding tears. I mean, I wasn't like bawling my eyes out or anything, but like, it was so sad, and I just wanted to give him a hug. Anyway, this book is fantastic. The world building is particularly amazing. Just how everything kind of comes together and fits. It's just, it's wonderful and I cannot wait to see where this series is going to lead. Obviously, I gave this book five stars. Then I read Before She Ignites by Jody Meadows. This is the first book in the Fallen Isles trilogy. And this follows a girl named Mira Minkova, who is the Hope Bearer. Um, on the day she was born, a treaty between all of the Fallen Isles was created, and they named it after her because her father was the one to draft it up. And so she serves as a symbol of hope for all of the Fallen Isles, but mostly uh, her specific island. And she is very much a mouthpiece for... Uh, this council that runs this island. It's not a secret council or anything, but you know, when it comes from her, this kind of beacon of hope, people are going to listen a bit more and trust a bit more. But then Mira finds out something that she really wasn't supposed to and she wants to tell people. And that lands her in the largest and most high security prison on the Fallen Isles called The Pit. And there she needs to learn how to stand up for herself and how to have her own voice and her own opinions and that what she says matters, that she is not just a, a pretty bauble for this council to, to tote out every time they need to say something, but she's somebody who has her own feelings and opinions and interests. And it's such a great book. It is a bit slower paced. This is very much a setup book. There's not too much that happens in it. But the way it's going, oh my gosh, I cannot wait for the second book. Also, there aren't as many dragons in this book as I thought there'd be. But it looks like book two is going to have far more dragons. And I am so excited for that. I gave this book five stars. Next, I read Nixia by Scott Rankin. This is about a boy named Emmett, and he is selected along with, I believe, nine other teenagers to go into space and go to this newly discovered inhabitable planet, uh, I believe called Eden, and there he is tasked with mining 
a substance called Nixia, which is like this intelligent substance that moves with your thoughts, and and it's it's a really cool substance. But before he can do that, on the ride over to Eden, he needs to uh, earn his place in Nixia, or in in Eden to mine Nixia. But before he does that, he needs to earn his place on Eden in a competition, very much like Throne of Glass, um, not necessarily Hunger Games, there's like, there's no like fighting to the death or anything, it's just that the top eight get to go to Eden, the bottom two have to stay aboard the like space station until it's time to go back, and... <laughs> There are a lot of, like, different competitions and games to, to earn points. And it's really interesting. But the story structure is just all over the place. And I think I figured out why. I'm pretty sure it's because the author wanted to bring in all of these tropes, only to subvert those tropes. And in doing so, he just totally effed up the entire story structure. Because there... There are just things that don't make sense, and it's not like a, I don't know what's happening, it's a, there's literally no reason for that to happen, and, and, or, there's no explanation for why that character did that thing that just makes no sense. And, yeah, it's just, there were, there were just things that I didn't care about, um, it got too predictable at some points, and then very, like, overly unpredictable at other points. I knew where it was going to end, but then there was this like final twist at the end, which made sense, but didn't make it's, it. This is a really weird book. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to say that right now. It was not a bad book and I definitely want to continue with the series, but it's just, I feel like the story structure is just a bit awkward. I gave this book three and a half stars. Then came the book that broke every little piece of me. Ugh. I read Cage of Destiny by Jennifer Ann Davis and this gave me the biggest book hangover I have ever had. So a little bit of backstory on the Reign of Secret series and its predecessor the True Reign series. The True Reign series I honestly don't know how to talk about without making it sound really cliche, which it's not. It does have some, some you know, classical YA fantasy tropes in there, like a lost heir coming to reclaim her throne, but it's low fantasy, not high fantasy. The world building is incredible. The characters are amazing. And yeah, if, if you... If you're looking for a great, like, low fantasy read, I highly recommend The Key by Jennifer Ann Davis, which is the first book in the True Rain series. Then make your way through the True Rain series, because it doesn't matter how much you like that, the uh, Reign of Secrets series is 2,000 times better, and I loved the True Rain series. And I can't really talk about too much about what the Reign of Secrets series is about without spoiling some things from the True Rain series, just know that it takes place about a generation later, and it is the best low fantasy series I have ever read. It's one of the best trilogies I have ever read, and I just cannot wait to see what this author does next. Oh my god, the characters are amazing. I love how she handled the romance in the Reign of Secrets series. I don't want to talk too much about it, because again, spoilers, but I, I really loved how she handled the romance. Uh, the world building is even more incredible than the True Rain series. And, oh, that ending, that ending made me smile and cry, and I just, oh, you need to read it. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Regardless to say, if I could, I would give this book all of the stars, but I can only give it five stars. Sporadically throughout the throughout August, I read the novellas from the Dorothy Must Die Stories Volume 2. These stories are about how Dorothy's friends from Oz, the Tin Man, the Scarecrow, and the Lion, sort of move over to the dark side. I read Heart of Tin and gave that one four stars, 
My biggest problem there, I think, was just that the Tin Man is in no way a sympathetic character throughout any of this novella. And honestly, the, the story just went by way too quickly. It was still an interesting story, but I just felt like it needed something else to make it complete. But yeah, and then again, there, there was no point in the story that the Tin Man was anywhere near a sympathetic character. He is romantically obsessed with Dorothy, and the last time he saw her, she was 12, which is just all sorts of creepy. <laughs> anyway, then I read uh, The Straw King, I believe it's what it's called, and this is about the Scarecrow, obviously, and I gave this one five stars. It's fantastic. It fills in some of the events that transpired between when Dorothy left Oz and when Dorothy returns, and it's it's a it's a really like thought provoking novella I think, and while I don't necessarily see how it could be connected to the main series, it was an interesting novella to read, and then the third one, Ruler of Beasts, I also gave five stars to, because for some reason the lion is the most sympathetic one of these characters that I have read from. Like I was honestly shocked. I did not think I was going to feel the most sympathy for the lion, but I did. And this book introduced uh, some things that do connect with Yellow Brick War, so I would recommend reading it before Yellow Brick War, just so things don't feel so out of left field. Okay. And then I finished off the month by reading Yellow Brick War by Danielle Page. This is the third book in the Dorothy Must die series, which, for those who do not know yet, is about a world in which Dorothy comes back to Oz, takes the throne, and rules tyrannically because she has been corrupted by magic. And this girl, Amy Gum, comes to Oz with, um, with the help of a secret order who has tasked her with killing Dorothy. This third book was pretty interesting. The first half I thought was going to like be extended to the entire book and there's a part of me that's happy about that but then there's a part of me that's just like it would have been interesting to have an entire book focused on what the first half of this book is focused on um, but then the second half is really interesting and honestly I could have easily seen this series be a trilogy if they didn't include so many villains like in the first book Dorothy and Glinda, yeah, they're villains. That's something that's known. In the second book, there's a new new villain introduced. And in this book, there's yet another villain introduced. Kind of a mega mastermind villain. And honestly, I didn't care for that at all. Like, there, there was no need to add another villain. And honestly, again, I easily this could have been the last book in the series. And so it just feels like the author's trying to stretch it a bit thin and it kind of feels like it's going into a kind of spin-off place, even though it's not a spin-off. So that's why I gave it four stars. Anyway, so that is my August wrap-up. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what was your favorite book that you read in August and your least favorite book that you read in August. Or just one of those if you didn't have a favorite or a least favorite. Uh, my favorite is... Without a doubt, Cage of Destiny. Um, my least favorite was probably Nixia. It just... Again, it's not that I don't want to continue that series. It's just... I could I could have easily seen how just adjusting a few things could have evened out the entire story structure. But... Yeah. Anyway, subscribe if you want to. I'm going to have new videos every weekday this week. And I will see you guys here tomorrow for my August book haul. Have an amazing day, and as always, happy reading. Bye.